Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another City of Newcastle episode. Um, I hope you are enjoying the series, and if you are, please do leave a like and subscribe if you are new. But, let's get straight into this video. So, since last time, I mean, da, the run was incredible, wasn't it? I mean, you saw me in a 1-0 defeat to Tamworth and a 2-1 defeat to South Shields, and it didn't get any better after that. We had, a, to be fair, a 1-0 draw against Tamworth, which we lost on penalties, which I think we were really unlucky to do because we had the chance to win the game and missed. Um, and then obviously we then missed our deciding penalty. So, you know, it was fantastic. Exactly what we wanted. Not. We followed that up with a 7-4 loss to, to Chorley. We brought it back. It was 4-1. 4-1 to Chorley it was. And we brought it back to 4-4. I then thought, tell you what, we could grab a goal here. We could We could grab this win. And then we just capitulated. Threw the game away. <laughs> I've just realised Harry Caldwell here, or Cardwell, I should say, got four goals. So, fair play to him. Um, after that, though, I mean, after that was brilliant. We haven't, we didn't lose. We spent a whole month losing every single game um, in the month of January. We then didn't lose in the month of February. It is now... March, obviously, that's what comes next. And we're going to play Kidderminster and Southport. Um, I was thinking about going a little bit further and maybe doing, like, guys in Kettering, but I thought, no, I think this is a good point to get to. Kettering, not Kettering, Kidderminster are a very good team. Southport are kind of mid-table, but a team we could definitely slip up against. It is match day. It's time for Kidderminster. Let's see who's playing in this one. So we are sticking with the 4-4-2. It's what's brought us back to form. It is working once again, but the team is looking so different to what we're used to. Uh, Hoskins is remaining in goal. Coogan is remaining at right back. Snedden's coming in and actually playing some games. I'm realising that I think these two should be the other way round. They should. Um, although, uh, one second. There we go. Sorted. So Gamblin and Snedden are at the back. Uh, Snedden's in because he's played well. Gabadibo had a suspension and uh, Snedden came in and played really well. So he's kept his spot alongside Gamblin. Now, Joe West is in at left back because of a suspension, as we can see down the bottom here, to Jacob Jones. So he's not able to play. Tavares is in um, on the right wing because Josh Foster's playing as a striker. You've probably noticed the, the name alongside him. Um, Kyle Hayde is in. I don't know if you've seen him before. I reckon probably not. He's a new signing. He's actually pretty good. He was brought in to be a backup, but he's very good. And he's played really well so far, so he's staying. Uh, Jack Baxter's alongside him with, obviously, Paul Miller on the right wing. And you've noticed he's unhappy. I got I priced him out of a move. I asked for 250k for him. Obviously, his value is at about 5k. It is 5k. No one wanted to buy on 250k. Um, so he's unhappy at the moment, but... We're hopefully going to bring him back to form. And up front, we have Josh Foster and Finley Clift. Finley Clift, a player that we've not seen in a while. Now, you're probably thinking, well, Levi Welsh isn't there. So surely he's injured or suspended, right? But surely you have a player better than Finley Clift to replace him with. You're right. We had Bailey Green, um, also injured. We have Harry Farley, also injured. So Finley Clift is playing. We've got Adam Hoare on the bench. And when we have a look at him, you'll probably understand why he's not the one starting. So Finley Clift is making a return to the team. He's played a couple of games. Um, he's not incredible anymore. <laughs> but hopefully he does quite well in this game. Fingers crossed. So I'm telling the boys to carry on from the last game. We had a really good game. Uh, got a good result. And to be fair, we're in good form. So hopefully we can continue that and get ourselves another three points and keep ourselves at the top of the league, which, by the way, after not winning a single game in the month of February, I'm surprised, not February, January, I'm surprised that we're still at the top of the table. Um, yeah, hopefully we can keep that spot. Okay, not much is happening so far, so I'm putting us down to balanced and hope, hoping that maybe we can get a bit more of the ball. I mean, only 40%, 42% of possession isn't great, but we are getting chances now that I've made that change. And there is a chance, but it's Kidderminster that's on the ball. Grayson is on it. Morris plays the ball over the top to Hutchinson. And Hutchinson hits the post. Is he going to get another chance or is that going to be it? That is going to be it. And it is half time. Nil-nil at the break. Isn't the worst, but also isn't the best. Um, I think 
looking at the the ratings, I mean, West is obviously one of the players that's not playing too well, and Finley Cliff isn't playing too well either. The two players that haven't been in the team for quite a while. I think we might have to try and do some business in between this game and the next one. So we're not doing badly at all. If everyone continues to work hard, we will win this. And I'll pump my fist to tell them that I know that they are capable of performing and getting us this win. Especially you, Finley Clift. I'm looking at you. You can do this. Okay, with 10 minutes to go, I think it's time that we've made a substitution. And Finley Clift, unfortunately, has not had a great game. But the issue is I don't really know what I can do. I think what we possibly do is go to a diamond. Is a diamond going to work? I mean, we could do this, actually. This could work. I'd say this every time, and it never works. Um, if we could just get this player to go in the... Come on. There we go. This will not work, but we're going to do it. And we're going to hope that it will work. Um, yeah, Miller's up front. CC's on. And... Yeah, I'm basically avoiding using Adam Hoare is basically what's going on. Uh, but no one's really playing well. Joe West has had a shocker, but there's no one really... Actually, tell you what, Lucas Gambling goes there. Gabadivo comes on. There we go. Sort. And the final change is only two minutes have passed is we're going to go attacking. Yep. Gambling. Big time gambling. And Tavares has the corner all into the box. And Cameron Gabadivo manages to get his head on it. Absolutely love that. Um, and tell you what, I take the credit for that, obviously. Bring it on, Gabadibo. And he, first thing he does, um, yep, yeah, corner in from Tavares, and we managed to get a goal. So, oh, I've made a mistake. I ha I, I'm i still on attacking. And Kidderminster are coming forward. Gabadibo gets on the ball, and CC manages to get the ball to uh, Miller and Foster. Never mind. Tactical genius. Now we're going to balanced, and we've won the game. Josh Foster. In the 88th minute, it's his eighth goal of the season. He's not had a great game of 6.4 up to now. But I'll tell you what, we're happy with that. Paul Miller, ball through to Foster. And Miller and Foster, to be fair, haven't had great games with 6.4s. From that one change, incredible. Much better. We're going to look at it again, apparently. We're not. We're not. 2-0. And there we go. It's full time. That one tactical change from a tactical genius is all that was needed in order to get that win. Um, so yeah, 2-0 against Kidderminster. Hopefully, more of the same in the next one. Okay, so it is match day now away at Southport. And we have made two new signings. Tyler Denton is coming in as a, a fringe player, as it says there, on just a pay-as-you-play kind of contract. But he's actually quite good. He's been released by Chesterfield. And, you know, he's quite well-rounded. He'll do a good job there. I'm not expecting incredible things from him, but just a solid backup whilst our first team left back is out. And then if we look further up the pitch, Josh Magenis, Mag Magenis is what we're going to call him. Josh Magenis is in as a target man. It's not a position we usually try and go for. If it doesn't really work with our system, we can put him as a poacher and he's perfectly okay at doing that. But target man is really what he likes to do. And I'm happy to give him that chance. If you look at his stats, I mean, the amount of green that we can see... I'm happy with that. I'm also quite happy to see someone that's got a green penalty taking stat. It's only 12, but you know, it's also, oh my, he's got, <laughs> he's got 15 long throws. How do we put him on long throws and then make him run in to head them? That's what I want to figure out. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, Joshua Jennings is in. And if we look at the rest of the team, it is exactly the same. Tavares on the left, Hayde and Baxter in the middle, Miller on the left. I'm going, yeah, tell you what, we've done midfield first. Denton, Gamblin, Snedden and Coogan at the back. And Magenis and Foster leading the line. So I'm telling them again to carry on from where they left off in the last game. Because it was a good win. It, we left it late. But it was, in the end, a good performance. It was but thanks to a tactical change, of course, from myself. But hopefully we won't need the tactical change. This team are down in 15th, I think it was. And we're instantly seeing a long throw towards Foster. And before we've even stopped introducing the match, we get a goal. 1-0, Josh Foster with the header. I thought it was going to be Magenis on the end of it, I'll be honest. But i tell you what, I just realised that both Joshes, we've got Joshes up front. Joshes up front, love that. Now, do we go with Joshes up front as the title or Finley Clift's back as the title? Now, that's... I mean, you'll already know this. I haven't decided yet. Okay, another long throw from Coogan. Who's it going to this time? It's going towards Paul Miller, but it didn't manage to get it. Magenis is on the end of the rebounded cross. It 
didn't manage to make his way to him though, but in an attempt to clear it, Southport have given the ball to Tavares, who plays it to Hayde, and Hayde to Coogan. Coogan back to Hayde to Baxter. What's Baxter going to do with it? A good tackle from Woods, to be fair. Oh, good taco, as you might want to say, if you're part of my Twitch chat. Um, <laughs> Jackson Jr. on the ball now, gambling across to Baxter. And Foster now. This is highlights going on for quite a while. Are we going to do anything with it? Or is it just going to be a lot of passing? Baxter. Forward to Magenis. I don't know what his uh, crossing's like. But he doesn't matter because he... I mean, we've had a freeze there. We <laughs> Completely frozen. Um, Baxter puts it wide though. So a lot of highlight for absolutely nothing. Okay, and it's half time and it is 1-0. A 1-0 lead to City of Newcastle going into the break. And we're quite happy with that. Um, we, uh, I would quite like a bit more though. And uh, that's exactly what I'm saying to the players. That I expect a bit more from you. And I know you're capable of bringing us that. Um, and instantly in the second half. We have a throw in for Southport. And Southport are trying to get it back into the box. Don't manage to though. Magellis plays it to Baxter. Baxter. Long ball to Foster. Can he double his scoring record in this game? He can't. Um, and yeah, but I mean, that was it. Okay, throw in now for Denton. I haven't seen much of him, which is actually quite good if you think about it. If the defenders aren't really a main part of the game, it means that the ball's on the right side of the pitch. But the ball goes in and Snedden, we are now seeing. Denton to Miller. What's M Miller's going to run past his man into a decent shooting position, but plays it to Foster. But Foster loses the ball and the ball gets intercepted and Foster wins it back or gets played it back anyway. And manages to put away his 10th goal of the season. Josh Foster. I mean, if we remember back to the start of the season when we brought him in. Or was it last season? I can't remember. But we brought him in for Manchester United. And he was very, very disappointing. This year, he's just come alive. And he's the exact player that we were hoping he was going to be. And he's a player that is not as wanted as Miller. But I tell you what, player teams of the same quality are wanting him. Okay, Wood puts the ball in for Southport, but it is headed just over the bar and nothing is going to come of it. But now we have a long throw towards Foster for the hat-trick. It doesn't manage to get ahead on it or put it on goal for that matter. Uh, Reese is on it now, plays it forward to Morgan. Can we close him down? We can't. And Hoskins with a brilliant save and that is going to be a Southport corner. Are they going to be able to make anything from that? I've already told Coogan to mark this, but we'll do it again. Wood into the box. Jackson Jr. manages to pick up the rebound out of the box. Leach now to Galvin. Is Galvin going to put it into the box or are we going to be able to block him? Tavares does really well to stop him from getting that. And I think that's probably going to be the end of the highlight. And it is. But we're going to go straight into another one for ourselves. With Genis to Miller. Baxter. Hayde. Hayde in loads of space. It's not quite quick enough though to... To make it any sort of advantage of that space. You know, if he was a box-to-box, -box, he probably would have taken a, a touch and maybe had a shot there. But he's not. He's a ball-winning midfielder. Um, Hayden now playing the ball forward to Foster. Foster to Tavares. Foster makes his run into the box. Football towards Magenis. And Magenis uh, doesn't manage to get it because the defender manages to clear it. Uh, Miller now on the ball. Plays it back to Baxter. A little one-two. Ball in towards Magenis and another chance for him, but he just can't put it in the back of the net. Magenis has had a good goal. A good goal? A good game. He's put himself in some dangerous positions for us, but unfortunately he's just not managed to get the ball and the defence has done quite well dealing with him, to be fair. I wonder if making the change to him as a poacher could change his fortunes. I'm going to do it. He's played well as a, as a target man, but we'll play him as a it's fine. As a poacher and see if that changes things. Southport do put the ball in the back of the net as I'm rambling on about positions of Magenis. Um, but it is offside and it's not going to count. Um, Jones to Bainbridge. Um, Bainbridge plays it across, but Bain Bainbridge is offside. So it's not going to count. No worries at all. Um, yeah, time's taken away. No change, it seems, from Magenis. Uh, with just a minute, no longer to go. And it is a 2-0 victory. Two wins from two contrasting from last episode love to see it a good win boys well done that was a really good performance from everyone even the debutants played really well magenis didn't manage to get his goal but i tell you what he had a solid game and i am happy with his impact and as you can see that victory keeps us at the top of the league table three points clear of kingsland um yeah i mean the form obviously was poor in that last month the, the month of january not the month of February, obviously, which we didn't lose in. And we're starting that again in March. I'd love to see it. We're 
We're doing okay. We're do well, I say we're doing okay. We're doing so much better than I was expecting. And actually, before we end this video, take a quick look at how the media have been predicting us to finish based on our team now. So obviously, we've moved around a lot in this predicted league table. And once again, we have moved again. Uh, I think last time I checked, we were predicted to finish 7th. We're now predicted to finish 5th. But we are overperforming so much by being in top spot. So hopefully we can keep that up and get ourselves promoted to the National League and possibly, just possibly, get ourselves a takeover. I mean, I say get ourselves a takeover. If you look at our finances, they're okay in comparison to what they were. But I believe if I click on the right tab, there's rumours of a board takeover. And that takeover, from what I've seen based on what the media have said, uh, is a fan-led. It's going to be a fan-led takeover, if it is to be believed. We've had quite a few recently in the last couple of seasons, and they've they've not come through. They've just, you know, petered out. But this one, they've not said that it shouldn't be believed. This one is a genuine one. So we could have a takeover, and hopefully the money that that possibly brings in could lead to us going professional. I've been trying for the last couple of seasons, definitely this season, with us being in the Vanarama North, but obviously... It's not quite at that professional level. But hopefully next season we can get there. If not, hopefully we'll get another automatic promotion. And another... Well, I mean, and another. Another automatic promotion. And then we'll be able to go professional. And we'll be in the professional leagues. Fingers crossed that happens. But this is going to be the end of the video, guys. I really hope you have enjoyed. Do leave a like and subscribe if you are new. And until next time, I'll see you later.